What's up, Mac Warriors? So I wanted to do a quick video on some of the basics for the direct fire support role. This is my favorite role to play as in Mac Warriors. So what I'm gonna do right now is just show you what is essentially not perfect play at all. But it's a uh, I'm gonna be explaining what I do right and some of the things that I do wrong and how I can improve on them for later. So right now, what I'm trying to do, since I'm on River City, I know that there's uh, some good sniping positions. Uh, along the the riverbed but behind these buildings right here so that's what I'm doing right now so I'm just moving into position so whenever you're playing as a direct fire support role the heat vision is one of your best friends because you can see uh, the mech outlines even when you're outside of targeting range so that's what I'm doing right now is sniping at heat signatures now one of the keys to direct fire support is using cover to your advantage it's more important than for any other role in my opinion because you'll see that even though there's a, a bunch of mechs that I'm hitting right now, and <laughs> occasionally I kind of hit along the wall there, but uh, whenever they fire at me, I can just duck behind, break line of sight, and uh, their fire is going to be impacting somewhere else. Now, I actually get into a battle pretty soon here with uh, a... I think he has a Goss rifle. Yeah, it's a Goss pole right there. So as you can see, his, his shots are coming right at me. But because I'm using the cover that's right next to me, the shots are all hitting the walls and not hitting me at all. So the advantage that this plays is that I'm keeping the enemy distracted. See, I've got at least two mechs that are at least worried about me. So that means that my teammates can advance along over to the, to the southeast. So what that means is that even though I might not, even if I wasn't hitting every single enemy, which is a concern for people who are new to the game, maybe don't have the aiming, and I'm not like a dead eye at all. So even though I'm not hitting all the time, I'm still providing a distinct advantage to my team by keeping the enemy distracted. So what I'm doing now is I see that uh, one of our scouts is trying to do battle with uh, what I think is two mechs, but one of them is actually a disconnect, but I don't know that at the time. So I'm trying to snipe at... Uh, whatever I can see without exposing myself too much because the problem with the direct fire support is that you are not very good in close encounters and this is gonna lead into one of the big mistakes that I make is I actually try to advance to support the scout instead of perhaps redeploying to another time but I want to help my my teammate out because you know I don't want him to just die although it, it he should probably retreat but uh, we're not talking about that, we're talking about direct fire support. So I'm moving up now, and I'm going to start engaging him with my PPCs. So, uh, like I said, this guy's actually disconnected, but I don't know that at the time. I probably could have told that if I was like paying attention and noticing that he's not really moving. But the main threat is going to be this hunchback. Uh, I think he's 4P, he's just a laser boat. And uh, because I can sort of see how often he's firing, I know that he's probably toting an XL engine, which will become important in a, in a few seconds. Um, because the he is going to wipe the floor with me unless I use the knowledge that he has an XL engine to my advantage. So you see, I'm trying to hit his uh, side torsos because, first of all, whenever you're dealing with hunchbacks, the side torsos are where a lot of the main weapons are. And for those of you who don't know, when you use an XL engine, if you take out the side torsos of the mech, it will actually decommission their entire mech because the engine extends into the side torsos with the XL. So uh, he's using streak SRMs, which are a little bit overpowered at the time of this video just because they uh, always seek to the center torso, unlike uh, LRMs, which have their damage area randomized. Uh, but that's just a little thing. That's not really that important. So uh, now I'm doing what a direct fire support role never wants to do but I know that my team's uh, doing really well I can sort of hear in the chatter that they're they're doing fine they're advancing so I'm just gonna try to keep this guy distracted by engaging with him now what I'm trying to do is uh, take as much uh, fire across the various parts of my body as I can by turning away from him as soon as I've uh, fired my weapons just making sure to keep moving making sure that I'm not exposing myself uh, any more than I have to, and uh, missing a couple shots there, sorry, but uh, you know, that's that's the point is that this isn't supposed to be a, a role that you have to be 100% accurate in order to make it viable. 
So what I'm trying to do is use everything that I have at my disposal to try to get the edge over on this guy that really should take me pretty easily. But I know that he's probably using an XL engine because of his rate of fire. I know that I have one of his torsos down, so if I can take that out, that means that I'm going to be able to win this battle. So I can see that uh, one of his arms is about to be taken out, so I might as well just get rid of that so I can reduce some of the weapons that he's firing at me. And now I see that his uh, left torso is about to go, and if I can just get one last shot off, I can probably take him, and there he goes. So I just wanted to do a quick recap now of what I wanted to cover in this video. The first thing is that these are tactics that anyone can use in a direct fire support role. I'm not using like some kind of specialized build that's trying to maximize damage. I'm basically using a stock K2 that just has the machine gun swapped out for a couple of feet sinks. Uh, I've also redistributed some of the armor as well, but it's not something where I need to make every shot count because I'm in a gossipult and my ammo's running out. These are things that will apply to no matter what build you're using. I want to give general tactics that are going to be applicable to whatever build you're using because if you use these and then you you know specialize your build to get it more personalized to you your performance is only going to go up if you have these more basic ideas in mind so the actual tactics that I'm covering are stuff like making sure that you're using cover to your advantage making sure that when you are taking damage you're trying to spread it over as many parts of your mech as you can and of course, taking account of what information you have about your enemy and how you can use it to defeat him more quickly. And that brings us to the end of the video. So thank you for watching, and if you found this helpful, please make sure to like it on YouTube. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos or any problems you have with this one, please leave them in the comments. Or I guess feel free to dislike the video if you really feel so inclined. So thanks again, and I'll see you on the battlefield.